Okay, everyone, welcome back to another video of Ant Will Plays. Today we're playing Amer. Sorry, Force of Habit. High School Story Class Act Book 3. Uh, last chapter was. Oh, Jesus. Are we finally gonna fi Are we finally gonna see if he cheated or not? Did they kiss or something? I don't know. I need some signs to see if they were cheating. Alright, let's begin. It's your second day abroad. What glamorous European adventure is in store today? Also, I'm trying to hurry this up so I can re react to Death Battle today. Because it's the new season. Season 7, I think. Yeah. Season 7. I'm going to tell you more about who the opponents are. I'm guessing you guys know by now. Chapter 11. Benevid. Benevid. <sighs> that evening at the hotel. Uh oh. You and Roy rush into your parents' hotel room, finding Miss Silver in tears. Miss Silver, are you okay? Kids, you shouldn't be here. This isn't something you need to see. Mom, it's fine. We're here for you. Wiping tears away, she turns back to Mr. Silva. Martin, how long has this been going on? A few months. I'm so so I'm so so sorry. But I was never but I wasn't cheating. I would never have an affair. Dad, come on. It's over. Stop embarrassing yourself. I swear I'm finally telling the truth. Diana and I are just friends. Why would you hide a friendship? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, if she's just your friend, why all the secrecy? Come on, come clean already. You're making everything worse. I never, I'd never be unfaithful to my wife. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. You all think I did some do something like that. I, I don't know what to say to make you believe me, but Diana would be sick at the idea of an affair. She's grieving her fiance. Fiance? I didn't know Miss Maddox was engaged. That makes it worse? Now this explains why you were sneaking around. Or the text messages. You kids went through my phone? Rory? You knew this was going on and didn't tell me? I'm sorry. I just couldn't. I was scared I'd make things even worse. I suppose it's your father's fault for creating this situation. Martin, explain yourself. I didn't want to seem like a failure of a husband. You were so strong through your treatments. If you had to see me cry, what kind of a man would, make, would that make me? My own dad was a stoic always taking care of us and never saw him cry I never saw him cry not even when my grandmother passed Martin but when we but, but when we didn't think we could pay for your treatment Brenda I was so lost I felt broken and so alone especially when you were in the hospital I don't get what that has to do with Miss Maddox? I joined a support group for partners of cage of cancer patients. Diana's fiance was losing the battle. We could, we would meet to talk about our loved ones and cry together. I couldn't let myself be burdened on my family, and I didn't want you to know how much I was hurting. But Diana helped me through it through I should have just been strong heart darling are you shame are you telling me you were ashamed of being in pain Miss Silva nods bowing his head a few tears rolling down his cheeks I I'm so so sorry Brenda and Rory Mr. Silva Okay, before we click anything, um, I just want to know 
So he wasn't cheating. Okay, good. But the fact and the fact that is um I don't know. Like why didn't you just tell them you were friends to begin with? And also the fact that you it's all right to cry. Anyway, but let's get back to the story. You wouldn't shame Roy for needing support. Your family would have been there for you. If you do have an affair, you better watch out. Okay, I'm not picking the third option. I'm picking the... Okay, I'm picking the... It's true. Just because I had cancer doesn't mean I can't be there for my husband. But, but I didn't want to frighten you even more. I was so afraid I would lose you. You think I didn't spend agonizing over how I could have died? I was shocked you weren't crying on my shoulder. I didn't want my wife's pain to be about me. I, I didn't want to give her more to worry about. You would have given her a lot less to worry about if you were honest. It seems like even as I grow, as I, as a grown man, I have a lot to learn from my kid, and of course, from my wife. Not to mention from my kid's pers perceptive childhood friend. It's okay, my darling. Never be ashamed of being afraid. Your fears and worries are always safe with me. Mr. S Mr. and Mrs. Silva embrace healing tears freely running down both their faces. Hmm. I think this is our cue to go. Yeah, let's let them, let's leave them to it. While Mr. and Mrs. Silva comfort one another, you and Roy slip back into the hallway where Sky and AJ are waiting. Were you two here the whole this whole time? We were worried. Is Miss Silva okay? Yeah, it was all a big misunderstanding. My dad was meeting Miss Maddox in secret because he was ashamed to let us see him cry about my mom's cancer. That, so that clears everything up. Now I feel guilty for how suspicious I was, but at least everything's okay. Yeah, I wouldn't get your hopes up right now because we have a contest to win. In your defense, I have no idea what else you were supposed to think with how strange he was acting. Still, I shouldn't have jumped to conclusions. I guess my family's been so great, I was kind of expecting they couldn't stay perfect. I mean, things aren't perfect. I hope your dad... I hope your dad can unlearn that stuff about hiding his feelings. I'll do my best to help him feel comfortable, but I do know this. Roy takes your hand and looks seriously into your eyes. Uh, you see, I will never, ever keep a secret like that from you in a million, not a million years. With all the times I cried at your house over the years, I think you know I can't handle guilt enough, handle guilt enough for secrets. You two are so good, you're lucky to have each other. You continue walking down the hallway towards your room. Just then, you run into Casey and Aaron, who are excitedly waving a piece of paper. You guys! You guys! You gotta see this! Can we just go to bed? Yes, two of our friends screeching in the, ho in the hotel hallway during social con real quiet hours. Not sure how I could miss it. Not us. You young Cambridgean, 
We just found out that the coolest show is happening tonight in a real life castle. Casey pushes the f into your hands and you read it. Oh sweet, you can stay overnight in a castle and get treated like royalty? I ran into somebody saying there are tickets left for tonight and it starts in an hour. Look, you can even see the castle from our hotel. You, Roy, and AJ head to the nearest window and look outside at the castle. Uh. <coughs> oh, jeez. <coughs> yeah. Not spooky at all, huh? Hold on. So, it's a show, but it's also overnight? Let me see. <coughs> oh, Andy takes the flyer, and after a moment, his eyes widen. Oh, it's an immersive theater experience. The overnight is part of the story. Sounds like a memorial, memorable way to spend our first night in London. I like the sound of an adventure. I'm in. You had me at treated like royalty. Maybe, uh, maybe. I was sort of looking forward to sleeping in our suites tonight. We're stuck between two good decisions. Well, just between us, Natalie snores like crazy, and I really need a good night's sleep. After the log flight, this would be perfect. Sweet, it's settled. To the castle. I'll get tickets on my on my phone while we walk. I'll email Mr. Olsen so he knows where we are. Within half an hour, you all arrive at the castle. Now, in case you guys know. I just think I'm snacking on something. I'm just chewing gum. You head toward the a tour guide dressed in historical garb. Excuse me, is this the right place? Indeed. This is the esteemed Waldworth Castle. The experience begins in 10 minutes. Can you explain the concept here a little more? Are we supposed to pretend we're old timey people? This is an immersive theatrical mystery. you Coleman culminating in overnight stay in our historical castle. I love immersive. They're the most groundbreaking medium happening in the theater world these days. We're glad to hear that. During the show, you're encouraged to interact with the actors as if you are a character too. Through the centuries, this castle has been home to royalty and nobility, has been a prison, and has rumors of hauntings, all of which my experience tonight. So the audience members are supposed to act, is that required? However much you wish to participate is up to you. You can spectate or you can engage as much as you want. Because you can, can engage as much as you wish. Three guesses on, three guesses what I'm going to do. Goodbye, Rory. Hello, Duchess Silva of Cedar Cove. That's the spirit. Right now, it is the year 1820, and you're nearly late for, to the ball. <sighs> hmm. No wonder I was invited to the ball. I'm, a ver I'm from a very noble family. As am I. Of 
course you are. The Queen would only invite the best of society. Excellent. It seems you're quite prepared right this way. We're actors, too, of course, in a play. Tour guide leads you and your friends into a lavish ballroom already filled with actors and participants. Everybody looks like they're from the Victorian area era. This actually looks rid rigidsy, if you want to be correct. You look around, taking in the action. Oh, you must be so broken up about the scandal. Yes, I cannot believe my poor bride went missing. Perhaps someone will help you find her. There's already a juicy scandal coming here. Was a coming here was a great idea. I bet if you talk to them, you get get involved in the story, or we can just enjoy the ball. I can't get enough of the store. The cool decorations. It's so realistic. I think I'll dance with you, Rory. We are at a ball, so that sounds like the right idea. It's always the right idea. Rory takes your hand and leads you onto the dance floor, bringing an arm around your waist. I hope you know how to waltz, because I don't. Me neither. I'm a theater kid. Of course I know how to waltz. I'll lead. First, you step forward. One foot, then the other, then bring the first foot to the second foot. Rory demonstrates a by guiding you through. So soon you get the hang of it, and you two, two are dancing in little circles. This isn't so bad at all. It's just one, two, three, one, two, three. Exactly. I admit I stepped on a few feet while I was learning, but it's not that bad until you, until you get spin get spin turns and evolved. Let's not get too crazy in here. Roy simply grins and simply and leads you through the effortless spin. Ah, uh, that wasn't so bad. I feel graceful. That's because you are. After the long after the song comes to an end, you take a break, people watching with Rory. This is so cool. I've never been to a show where this where the audience is involved like this. I feel like a little kid playing pretend, but with a way cool with way cooler props. I kinda wish they hadn't taken our self cell phones at the beginning. It'd be funny to show one of the actors. What's this demonic contraption, and why does it glow? Ah, exactly. Besides, the exit signs is already demonically glowing. I feel like they didn't have those back in back then. They never did. And suddenly, you are you are interrupted by a tormented cry from the actor. Don't you dare die! Dare say my beloved has died. I pray it isn't so. I cannot go on without her. Perhaps someone will find her yet. Alive. I hope for this, your sake. Yikes, this story got dark fast. Wait a moment. Those young guests seem a tad suspicious. I fear I've never seen them before in my life. We were invited just like everyone else. Or were you? Regardless, I must be alone. I asked you to leave my party this instant. As if from nowhere, the tour guide reappears, rounding you all up. Quick, follow me. We must go to the prisons. That sounds dangerous. 
I hear the most dangerous criminals in London get locked up in there. Quickly, the tour guide leads you into a dark prison and disappears back into the halls. You are questioned by a harsh voice. Stop right there. I see you're the new prisoners. I'm innocent. It was Tony. Hey. I'm a noble from the esteemed family. I demand you release him. The one turns on you, ushering you into a cell and closing the barred door b behind you with a clang. I knew you had a dangerous face. Confess your crime, miscreant. My crime? I did it to feed my family. I'm extremely misunderstood. Let me guess. Your prisoner number is 246601. Is that another theater reference? Someone needs to make a list for me. For me for one of these, one of these days. I have no, I'll have none of your lies. I know you murdered a young woman, on on her wedding day. In my dream as the criminal, does that make me an accessor, accessory to the crime? I'm too young for prison. Enough of this foolishness. Be gone, young criminals. May I never see your foul faces ever again. I guess I want to ushers you into the next part of the show. <coughs> so rude, but at least we're free. Yeah, we're free. This is getting interesting. So I guess the missing girl was murdered after all. I hope we don't have to tell the guy from the ball that his beloved really is dead. Your friends, you and your friends continue through the the corridor of the killed castle. There's no one here. Shouldn't there be actors or something? You probably, you're, we're probably supposed to explore. This has to be part of the story. Exactly, if they didn't want... I'll share. Someone will get will get us. It's kind of spooky. I want to go back to the ballroom before I became embroiled in murder. It's too late now. Our lives are forever altered. Suddenly, you stop in your tracks, listening. Guys, do do you hear that? Help me. Casey shrieks, flailing around and knocking into a nearby statue, sending it clattering to the ground. Casey, stop breaking the props. We could get in trouble. It wasn't intentional. Wait, crap. Did I really break something? It seems like the statue made of plastic. Just... I'll set him up right, and he'll be good as now. What the heck was that voice? One second. Okay. The tour guide did say that the, this castle was haunted. I think we found the ghost. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Their sound tech amazing. I can't even tell where the voice is coming from. We should try asking the voice something. You barely step forward. Rory takes your hand and to steady you. Alright, ghost. If you can hear me, how can we help you? A gust of wind blows through the room as you shiver. It's a fan. They have a fan set up, right? I must be an eye with my beloved. I was stolen away before our wedding. That's so terrible. I bet your beloved is still looking for you. Just tell us where to go and we'll find him for you. Yeah, I bet if we can... I bet if we can see you, he can come too. And you'll be together again. Suddenly a familiar man rushes into the corridor, stopping cold, his eyes wide. Hello? I thought I heard a voice. Must be the wind.
she may have been murdered, but she's still in these halls waiting for you. It's true, we were just talking to her. And we think the killer is locked up in prison, so that's plus. I'm a little fuzzy on it. To have. I did not think such things were possible. Prove it to me. Darling, speak. Speak. Speak, sorry. Yes, Henry. Do my ears deceive me in death? <coughs> the actor gasped, placing a hand on his heart before running toward the voice. Darling, how could I have missed you? How I've missed you. I can't believe these wonderful friends of you found again. Looks like love transcends even death. Oh, that's actually pretty touching. I hope they find a way to be together. Before you know it, you've reached the end of the show, and you, you and your friends shown to your rooms. And according to legend, the young man would speak t to thin air, claiming he'd found his lost love. Both of their spirits still haunt these hall wa walls. An interesting story. And I helped bring them together? Bring them back together? I'm a hero. I just as I'm making it through the mystery. This is where you'll be staying tonight. A room truly fit for royalty. It's so ordinate. You sit down on the bed, the soft cushion sinking between you. Before I leave you, I have I had the servants prepare you some warm evening tea with honey. Oh, I'm, I have tea made by servants? I can't get used to this. You sip your tea just then, you soon hear another knock on the door. Don't you dare be another ghost. It's just me. I wanted to say goodnight. Well, in that case, I guess I can allow a visitor to my chambers. Glad the royal treatment is going into your head. You deserve it. Or he draws close to where you sit on the bed, resting a small kiss on your lips. I could get used to I could use that every night before vet for bed. Hmm. So could I at least at least could, so could I. At least I get to kiss you more tomorrow. And at least I get to say goodnight tonight with our roommates around. Roy carefully tucks you into into the closet, placing your tea safely on the bit table. Sleep tight, Tony. Sweet dreams. And just as soon as she as she appeared, she heads out, closing the door softly. <coughs> Bright and early the next morning, you and your friends excitedly pile into the train to Paris, chattering amongst yourselves. I almost didn't want to get up from my bed in the castle, but I have. But I would have hated myself if I'd miss out on today. Ew, <laughs> that was probably the comfiest bed I've slept in my whole life. All the better that we're super well rested in the, for the most romantic city in the world. Still can't believe we're visiting Paris. We had just enough left over from the scholarship fund to cover the day trip. Can't wait to soak up all the Parisian culture. I don't know about culture, but I'm here for... I hear there's even an official list of best places to kiss in Paris. Well, let me just guess. One of those is the Eiffel Tower. Maybe... I'll get to steal you away for our, our Parisian adventure later, and you'll have to show me that list. You you make eye, make eyes at Roy, squeezing one eye shut in smooth wink, picturing how you've seen it done in movies. Uh, is there something in your eye? Oh, <laughs> no. I can't believe none of you have mentioned the French theatrical legacy. You got Molière, Vig Victor, Hugo. <clears throat> I 
I don't know anything about the Paris theater scene. I know the Phantom of the Opera is set in Paris, but that runs in London. Oh, speaking of Phantom, the famous opera house from the story is here. Which I hear is full of ghosts, not to mention the stories about the catacombs. Ravinsky Gell, you press your face to the window watching with fascination as the sights zoom past you. Suddenly, you see a familiar reflection on, in the glass. Speaking of ghosts, I hope what I'm seeing right now isn't real. Nice to see you dorks too. Not. Oh god, it's them. We were hoping this train car would be empty. Not only is it full, but the contents are probably contagious. You're the sick ones. If we were contagious, maybe you'd catch us and turn into nice people. We're nice. You're just insecure because your show's not good. What are you doing on the same train as us anyway? You're not the only school going to Paris today. How narcissistic can you get? I'd advise you to leave. We're here to enjoy ourselves with a day in Paris, not to deal with the likes of you. Oh, so you're hanging out in Paris all day? Probably into the evening, too? Yeah, Mr. Obvious. What's it to you? Oh, nothing. It's just gonna feel good doing productive things like rehearsal while you waste while you idiots waste your time. Speaking of wasting time, let's bounce. Bye, losers. As the Staten kids stalk out of the train car, you and your friends share a confused look. That was weird. Don't wish your injury figuring them out. Look, we're crossing the border. I hate the Staten kids. I really do. Too. Later, losers. Oh, when we beat you, you're gonna be talking now. After disembarking the train, you and your friends explore the Paris streets, taking in the sights. Ah, the Paris air. Smells like buzz and wonder. Mr. Olsen said we, we can do whatever we want until 3 o'clock p.m. Paris is our oyster. Honestly, we're going shopping first. I'm not passing up the chance to try on designer clothes. Prom is happening right when we return. It would be ideal to have prom clothes ready so we don't need to rush. So, sure, but just so it's said, if all we see through, see through the window is stuff a baby doll would wear, I'm not going in. Look, I see a store with amazing suits and gowns in the windows, and the mannequins have, air, have hair like real people. You point in the minim, to the minimalistic facade of a high-end boutique, noticing guards in black tuxedos, manning the entrance. Am I first normal to have guards outside of clothing stores? Welcome to the world of high fashion, where expensive clothes are treated like museum pieces. Let's go in. Sorry, I was off drifting a bit. You you all walk through the door, a little bell tinkling as you step across the threshold you take in the clothes. Whoa, I didn't even know lace could look like that. Excuse-moi, excuse-moi. You spin around coming face to face with a strange Frenchman. Sorry, no parlez parvelle. That's quite all right. I'm tringling. I'm trilingual. I was simply admiring your look. So fresh, so useful. Oh, 
routine. You must tell me what products you're using. I just washed my face this morning. It was some kind of soap. You have just the gin, the uh, quay. I picture buying my latest. Uh, excuse me, collection. I must see you in my creations. Your your collection, like a stamp collection. Tony, that's that's. Oh my God. Okay. Is this the guy from America's Most Illegible? I'm speechless. I'm having I'm dying. Uh, yep, yeah, that's right. It's Lancelin. This is how people, American young people speak and not a cause for alarm. Yes. Could be either, could be either. Roy knows for being dramatic. You're the famous designer Lancelin. I've been following your work ever since you copped in one of my one of my favorite films, The Red Dove. I have your Vogue edi editorial tacked on my wall. As your friends crowd around Lanson, his face lights up. Little muses, as far as the eye can see, so radiant. Each of you. We're looking for stuff to wear to prom, if you have anything like that. Oh, how wonderful. American. I just love... I have just the thing you would... Would you grant me the privilege to dress dressing you? My guess is I you, you don't usually style regular people like that. No. My work is for the silver screen. But the literal living room screen. But you made an impression. I must be dreaming. Can I pinch? I can pinch you. You, the tall one. Like a beautiful willow tree. I have just the thing in mind. Me? Yes, you. Go try on this gown. I think you'll love it. Anna stumbles into the dressing room. Moments later, she emerges in a form-fitting dress. Okay. Okay. That's nice. That's really nice. It's so me. What do y'all think? So fierce, so powerful. You should consider a career in modeling. You could wear that dress in another editorial. Oh, I think that's the that's in the in the cards, but I'm flattered. I'll stick to high school acting for now. I uh Dang, wow. You look awesome. Well, if you're speechless, that's all I need. Gacy dashes into another dressing room, emerging shortly. Aw, that's so sweet. I look dope. Way better than anything I could have picked out. Casey does a weird little dance in front of the mirror, checking out the d outfit. Yes, yes. The world is your one, ra one ra runway. You, you strange child. It looks like it was made for you. You better not outshine me at prom. AJ goes next, coming out in an elegant suit. Eh, I like the green. I feel dashing like it's my red carpet moment. After I've directed a big indie circuit hit. Prime basically will be our red carpet once we sweep the floor at the competition tomorrow. Sounds like you'd better get that suit as a vote of confidence in us. Of course, you're a director. My instincts must be spot on. I, so I sold the very same suit to a well-known amateur last week. Now let's see. You there. The angel with the red hair. I think she preferred devil. Even better. I have the perfect gown. Both chick and edgy. You'll look like a goddess of the moon. Sky examines the fabric. Lancelin hands her. She smiles tentatively, disappears, and then returns. Uh, okay. 
Oh my god. I do feel like you guys. Excellent, you're a genius. This guy does an uncharacteristic troll. Admiring herself in the mirror, you applaud. Sky, you're stunning. Definitely an upgrade from Homecoming. We all knew black was your color, but until now, we had no idea just how good you could make it look. I'll say, and you look happy in it, which is the mo most important part. And now, Tony, here, try a few looks and pick your favorite. I couldn't quite decide you would, you would inspire me so much. Jackson places, places a folded assortment of outfits into your arms, ushering you into the dressing room. This room was just as fancy as the store. The clothes hanging in there in here look super delicate. We can try those on next, but I think you'll soon over what I've picked out for you. At Lanson's behest, you regard the three assembles you walk in with. You try them on in front of the mirror. Wear a designer suit to prom to dazzle Rory and seize the spotlight. Hmm, once in a blue moon, looks nice. Coming up roses. Look. I like the blue. You're taking forever, come on. Come on now, we need to see how amazing you look. Wait, I don't want Roy to see me before prom. It has to be a, it has to be a big movie-like moment of reveal. Don't worry. If it's important to you, I'm turning my back. I can't see a thing. Continuously, you emerge in your chosen outfit, appreciating the fabric. A little fabric against your body. Oh, you look trans magnifique. But how do you feel? I felt like I was just dressed, dressed to the nines by a world famous designer. So pretty freaking flawless. That's when I applauded your humor, laughing joyously. You look ready to, to, to star in the next romance film. I'm costuming such classic elegance. You look like you just stepped off the red carpet. Can't tell if you're my brother or a model. I'm trying to picture what you're wearing based on what is on all these compliments, but I know I won't come close. You'll find out on prom night. Keep your eyeballs away. Fine, fine. I'll try to be patient. You quickly change back into your regular clothes so she won't see. When you return, Lancelin is and going to be talking with Roy. Roy. I have just the assemble for you. Come try it on. You look marvelous. Your turn to look away, Tony. Spin around and close your eyes. I guess that's only fair. Here's some rustling in the dressing room, followed by footsteps and a collective gasp. What do y'all think? Oh my, Rory. This may be my favorite look of the afternoon, other than Tony. So let me pick up my jaw off the floor. Tony's one lucky person. I need to see. What have I done to myself? Now you got... Now you know what true suffering feels like. <laughs> you all pose and parade around trying on more fancy clothes for fun. Having the t time of your lives. <laughs> After finishing your prom shopping, you head to meet up with the rest of the group. You gather at the Laveur, marveling at the artwork as Mr. Olsen leads your group. This sculpture is called The Thinker. Its artist, Rodin, was known for his emotional and evocative human figures. He's so intense. I wonder what he's supposed to be thinking about. Oh, 
Nobody shoots in thought that long unless they're really pinning over somebody. That's relatable. <laughs> I'm with you. He's definitely in love. Over here, you'll find the famed Mona Lisa with the f most mysterious smile in the art world. As you follow the group across the museum, your phone pings, you s secretly look and notice Casey doing do the same. It's Aunt Wendy! It's Aunt Wendy? Hi kids, are you free? Are you still free the day after your show? Yes, we're one, one thousand percent still want to meet you. If you still want to meet us, of course I do. I was hoping to spend a, the day with you two. I have a couple of ideas up my sleeve. Yes, that sounds great. We can't wait to meet you. Excellent. We can meet up at my place if you don't mind dogs. She's a French bulldog named Sibyl. She adores soap operas and chopped up carrots. She sounds flawless. You can give her a treat when you visit. She'd love that. We have a pup for two. His name is Biscuit, and he's a big fluff ball who likes eating snacks. Socks. Aw, I'd love, love to see pictures. Roy taps you on the shoulder, and you jump. Ah! Tony, please keep your voice down. We're in the museum. Sorry, Mr. Olsen. Roy, what the heck? Only trying to make sure you don't miss out. Miss one of the most famous paintings in history. I'm looking, I promise, can I modern guy text and be totally present in the world? You tell me, but first tell me what do you think of Mona Lisa? You intently wind your eyes and stare through the crowd surrounding the painting. She's beautiful, she's very beautiful and small. I can barely even see her through the through all these people. But at least now you can say that you saw her at all. Speaking of crowds, though, we're not going to be in Paris much longer, and the sun's starting to set outside. Let me guess, you want to go enjoy Paris alone with me, and maybe kiss under the stars. Roy's eyes linger on your lips as she smiles at the thought. Do you want to? If we sneak out now, I bet Mr. Olson won't mind. Besides, I may have set up a surprise for you. A surprise? Okay. Lead the way. Oh, oh, oh. I am Drench. I'll stop. I'm sorry. I was hoping you'd say yes. Honestly, wasn't sh honestly wasn't sure what I'd do if you didn't. Follow me. Our first stop is a romantic dinner for two. Lead the way. Smiling, <laughs> you and Roy slip out of the museum and into the Paris evening. You and Roy catch a taxi to the elegant hotel. Roy takes your hand and leads you to a restaurant to the top floor. Holy cheese! What? We can see the Eiffel Tower right out the window. I don't know if, we, if we'll ever be in Paris together again, so I want to make sure everything is perfect. Your timing for dinner is great. I'm starving, but I don't think I can pr pronounce anything on the menu. How about we start with a familiar word, escargo. Escargot. Snails? You took me on a date to eat snails? I take all the compliments related to this surprise. Come on, we're across the world in a beautiful city, and this moment may never happen again. I figured we could should take the chance. Excuse me. Okay. 
What if I exit on the way there and orders the S car got? Soon it's placed before you on a steaming plate. Rory tries one, chewing for a moment with a thoughtful expression. They're good. I wonder if I would be insisting if I fed you one. Good, you don't like snails. I mean, they're insects, but the fact of eating a snail is gross. If you sprinkle salt on a snail or a slug, I don't like the result. Rory piece pierces through a piece of escargot with a fork. Gently lifting it up to your lips. For you, my dear Munzue. You lock eyes with Rory as you bite down, savoring the novel taste. Yum. This is actually good. Kind of soft and mushroomy. Jisuzivut. I can't find that on the menu. No, that's not a dish. It's a phrase. I learned I learned earlier. It means I'm crazy about you. I feel the same way. I'm sad to say I actually don't know the right way to say to French. French. It's fine. I think my transla translation and, oh, got to th got the point across. I can't get over how dreamlike this whole trip is. We're staying in such a luxurious hotel, and now this. Dreamlike is so the right word for it. In my wildest dreams, I go to every country and try all the new things I can. Before now, the furthest I got in my travels was road tripping to the Grand Canyon with my parents. Oh yeah, I remember seeing pictures from that day from that trip. And remember your huge sunburn when you came back to school? My whole body was roasted alive. Mostly worth it for the view, though I'll never forget how vast it was. My dad had a high school reunion in Kansas, so we made it into a family trip. I felt so tiny next to, the, to that giant twine. Sounds truly awe-inspiring. You said you've been on a plane before. I thought your parents took you to New York that one time. Yeah, that was the second coolest trip of my life, next to this one. We saw a couple Broadway shows, and everything felt right in my, in my way in my heart. Speaking of things that make my heart happy, it's about time we get going to part two for, of the surprise. I can't picture what could top this. Curious, you and Rory pay the bill, and you head out to the waterfront. This must be the scene. It's so pretty at night. I bet that was your surprise. The scene is involved in the surprise. Look over by the dock. Sure enough, you spot a little boat with just room enough for... Oh! Now I get it. Rory helps you in, steadying you as you nearly lose your balance. Whoa. Nope. I am not falling into the river today. If you did, I'd jump in after you. And we have a funny story for everyone later. So it wouldn't be all bad. Or it pushes you off the, off the, off from the dock and you begin floating down the river. The moon reflecting on the lazy current. How, how did you pull this off? I can't believe you got us a boat. Ever since middle school, I had a fan so you're sharing a boat on the scene with a beautiful guy. Handsome. Just say handsome. But the person was never 
specific until I realized I liked you that way. So the second, tr so the second the trip was announced, I started researching how I could make my dream possible. That was a picture of you and me living together after college or something. I know if that. That I know if that happens, it's a it's a ways away, and I hope I'm not being creepy or anything or going too fast. Roy puts a calming hand on your leg, gazing earnestly into your eyes. No, I want to hear it. What else? Well, we have a cozy little apartment with two dogs and a ton of plants. We slow dance to '80s music in the kitchen while making dinner. I bet I bring you breakfast in bed to make you smile. I'll add that in next time. I have the daydream. And as you and Rory continue traveling down the river, you find yourself leaning in closer, your face inches away. You brush your lips against Rory's closing against Rory's closing your eyes. Rory pulls you closer, kissing you back gently. She briefly breaks from your lips, scattering little kisses across your nose, your forehead, your jaw. Every part of you is perfect. You look more breathtaking than any painting in the Levert. Less talking, please. Please, my kissing. You capture her lips again, deepening the kiss. Your lips move together to the rhythm of the softly rocking boat, and you briefly lose yourself. After a momentary eternity, you both pull back, settling into the embrace. Rory briefly wiggles out of your embrace to dig out her phone. It's getting late. We should start heading back. We wouldn't want, want to get left in Paris. Oh, no. Maybe that would be nice. We could live in this boat, eat fish. Yeah, at least there's plenty of water and plenty of you. Roy kisses the top of your head with a little laugh. Wait, now that I think about it, I'm not sure I'd want to live off river water. Imagine how many birds, birds poop in here. Ew, in that case, sounds like we should get back, go back to London. Besides, we have a festival to win tomorrow. Yeah! In the next chapter, I'm guessing. You and Rory bring the boat back to shore. You walk back to the train station, holding hands the entire way. The next morning, back in London, you and your roommates are getting ready you need to head to the festival. Come on, let's go. We have so many shows I want to see with its time to perform. Hold your enthusiasm. I'm still coming to grips with being awake this early. Mark, are you kidding? I can barely see with how stoked I am. Then you hear a loud bang on the door and you all jump. What the heck? Unlock the door. Uh, excuse me. Rubbing your temple on the other side. You find AJ? It's hours before call time. Don't you dare make us have a 10 a.m. run through. It's not that. Prospero's staff has been stolen. Prospero's staff has been stolen? Your most important prop has gone missing. Will you be able to track it down in time for opening night? Oh no. I bet it was those. It was those kids. I know it was those kids. Because they said something something about it. Well, anyway. um, I'm excited for Wednesday, guys. Because this coming Wednesday, we're going to be entering a new, a new book. You heard me right. We're going to be entering a new book. It's called Blade It's called Blades of Light and Shadow.
I'm excited for this because this will be the first choices video that revolves around fantasy, even though we did the elementalist, which is basically magic. But anyway, this is a this one has swords and knights and guns, you know, like the crowd and the flame. Never did that book, but anyway, I'm excited for that one. So. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of what you think of the video. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. I think I I need to start over. Okay. If you want to get notified of all the videos I put up on my channel, hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next video. See you guys later. I'll see you guys in a minute, because death battle. See you guys in a little while.